Right now, a police chase stopped by one department is picked back up by another. We look at the two different policies when it comes to pursuits, why both agencies say they made the right choice. Plus, workers at the State Street Starbucks store making the push to unionize what options they have to push companies for recognition. And Madison's new alders are sworn in today, one of the most diverse common councils in city history. We're live at City Council with what they had to say. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. You are looking at a police chase this morning that Monona police picked up after Madison police decided to stop. It started with a shooting and it's grown into a conversation about how and when police departments stop and start a chase. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles spoke to both chiefs today. Naomi. Eric, the chiefs I spoke to backed each of their officers' decisions in an incident that underscores not just differing policies, but also how each department applies discretion when getting involved in a chase. Shot at our caller's vehicle. As people woke up and drove to work on Tuesday morning, up to Walmart right now. a police chase started, stopped, and started again. This it. Monona police dash cam picking up where Madison police left off, a chase that led Monona across several miles of Highway 51 at times at speeds of more than 100 miles an hour. One of the individuals involved was actually physically armed with a handgun as they fled uh, from the vehicle in hand. The chase ended safely with four arrests, but the conversation has only started. They helped write a part of that policy uh, at its time with the Madison Police Department. However, it's changed over time. It was not the same policy that I uh, helped uh, produce. Monona Chief Brian Cheney is Madison's former traffic captain. I, I don't agree. How Madison's um, policy is being applied today underscores each agency's differences. We've already received feedback, direct feedback from a couple of suspects whom we've apprehended as a result of pursuits who have literally told our officers, I stopped or I gave up when I realized it was Monona PD. Madison's policy allows chases only for violent crime a key difference from Monona. But it's a clause shared by both agencies that applies to Tuesday's chase, the option to stop the chase when the officer believes the public risk outweighs the reward. In this case, I think they made uh, a very good call. Both chiefs point to a community that has different expectations. They do not expect us to be tough on anything. They expect us to be smart. Uh, there are needs uh, within each community that, that uh, may be different than our neighbor. And a culture with a different perspective. We have a culture of of allowing our officers to make decisions based on good judgment. Monona's chase policy was only recently updated last November. Previously, it was very similar to Madison's policy that only authorizes these chases for the most dangerous situations. Interesting discussion. Naomi, thank you. The Dane County Medical Examiner identifies the elderly couple found dead in a home on Madison's east side. Officials say 71-year-old Faye Neglis and 68-year-old Gregory Neglis were pronounced dead at the scene. They were found in the 2800 block of Molin Street Sunday afternoon. Autopsy results concluded Faye was the victim of a homicide and Gregory died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Faye was found in the living room. Gregory found in the basement. Their deaths remain under investigation. A 52-year-old man killed in a deadly crash yesterday has now been identified. This incident happened in the village of Dane. David Esser of Dane died after a Lodi man ran a stop sign and hit his SUV. That's according to police. The 22-year-old driver hit Esser was taken to the hospital and then booked into jail on a tentative charge of homicide by negligent use of a motor vehicle. A party bus driver is being commended for his quick thinking after a fun night in Milwaukee ended in gunfire for a group of concert goers over the weekend. That bus was just leaving the Morgan Wallen concert in Milwaukee when it caught, got caught in the crossfire of a drive-by shooting between two other vehicles. Luckily, only one of the shots fired actually hit the bus, passing through the back end toward the front, damaging two windows and several seats where passengers had been sitting just moments before taking cover. Passengers say it was the driver's quick thinking and calm demeanor that made a huge difference in keeping everyone safe. If I was the driver, it wouldn't have ended the same way, I'm sure. He remained super calm and quickly got us out of there. And then immediately after the fact, when we were able to pull over, the first thing he said was, is everyone okay? And Milwaukee police say they're still investigating, but so far no one is in custody. Let's check your first warrant forecast now. Here is Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? A lot nicer today than yesterday just because we had some sunshine and we've melted most, if not all, of the snow, at least here in the Madison area. Let's take a look at visible cloud track. We can still see some snow on the ground. That's that white right in the middle of the screen there. Uh, that's the melting snow over west central Wisconsin where some areas picked up between about a foot and almost two feet of snow. So there's still some more to melt there, but a lot of that has started to melt. Uh, looking at Doppler track, things pretty quiet right now, not seeing any precipitation across Wisconsin. This time tomorrow, we'll see some showers and thunderstorms. In fact, the 
uh, Storm Prediction Center has the possibility for an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm over southwestern Wisconsin. I think the main threat is going to be hail with temperatures probably around 50 degrees. Low temperatures this morning, 31 in Madison, but over that snow cover to the northwest, temperatures dropped into the teens up in Camp Douglas and Black River Falls. Current temperatures are in the lower 50s across much of southern Wisconsin, a few places warmer than that, but notice again over that snow cover, temperatures staying in the 40s. Across Dane County, 54 right now in Stoughton, 53 in Cross Plains, and 51 to the north in Wanakee. Look for skies to become partly cloudy this evening. Temperatures dropping off to about 42 degrees by late evening. Later on, I'll take a look at the timing of those showers and thunderstorms and see how much rain we can expect. Gary, thank you. Feeling undervalued and understaffed, workers at the State Street Starbucks are moving forward with plans to unionize, filing a request this morning. Tahalia Modin shares why they're making that push and details behind this nationwide trend. We don't feel respected. Starbucks workers on the 600 block of State Street say now is the time to act. Things have just been a lot more like tense in the store. There's threats of people getting fired and written up and things of that sort. They say at first they held off on plans to unionize even after the location on the Capitol Square unionized last year. But after seeing the corporation's response to collective bargaining efforts nationwide, they were done laying low. The way they were treated is just outrageous. And we sat back and we watched this. This is a very strong store with a lot of partners who make a lot of money. So we decided we had to act. The National Labor Relations Board has lodged several complaints against the company, with reports of Starbucks firing unionized workers and closing down locations that voted to unionize, thereby violating the law. That's something Starbucks has denied. And while the NLBR is in charge of supervising labor practices, their power is limited. There is no punitive aspect to the NLRB in terms of, like, that there's penalties or fines. There have been proposals that would have... Uh, created such penalties, but they have not been endorsed by the Congress. Those bills have not passed. Right now, all they can do is encourage employers to obey the law, come to the table, and bargain in good faith. Still, experts say in the past few years, union favorability has risen dramatically, in part because the pandemic made people rethink their relationships with work, especially among Gen Z and service industry workers, which can apply pressure. And I think workers are Tired of hearing about record corporate profits while they're just getting by. In Madison, I'm Tahlil Muhiddin, News 3 Now. The State Street Shop is one of hundreds of Starbucks locations across the country joining the effort to unionize. It's also the second to do so in Madison. Capitol Square workers won their bid last summer to join Starbucks Workers United. At the Capitol today, a pair of bills that would prohibit state and local governments from banning gas-powered vehicles and other machines. It's now heading to the state Senate. The bill's Republican sponsors hope to outlaw measures similar to a law passed in California last year requiring that all new cars, trucks, and SUVs sold in the state run on electricity or hydrogen by the year 2035. The measures would still need approval from the Senate and also Governor Tony Evers, who's likely to veto it. Also at the Capitol, a bill designating carjacking as a criminal offense and creating harsher penalties for people who use a weapon to steal a vehicle, receiving final approval today. Under the bill, someone who uses a weapon to steal a vehicle would be guilty of the second highest level felony in the state and could be sentenced to up to 60 years in prison. Currently, the maximum sentence is up to 40 years and a fine of $100,000. The bipartisan bill now heads the governor, who has said he supports this measure. Madison's new Common Council sworn in this afternoon. It's considered to be one of the most diverse councils in city history. Our Catherine Merck spoke with the newly elected alders about how they plan to improve Madison. Catherine? This council includes the first ever transgender alder, along with the fact that nearly half of these alders are new to their job. That means a lot of variety and a lot of diverse opinions are coming to this city. Today's swearing in comes after this April's election. In the closest race we saw this cycle, Isidore Knox Jr. defeated his opponent by pulling his name out of a bag after his recount ended in a tie. He told me his tight race reflects the diversity in his district and the whole city. Our election was literally a tie. And I think that's uh, a, um, indicative of how the city is. You know, we have a divided city. And so our challenge is to come together, listen to all sides of perspectives, and ultimately bring, bring uh, the city together through the policies that the council makes here. 
elected elders represent... Along with the council swearing in, a new common council president and vice president were elected. The common council will meet again tonight at 6.30. Reporting live in Madison, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. Coming up, the FDI, FDA greenlights additional doses of a bivalent COVID booster. Find out who's eligible to get one. Plus, Dane County officials offer a warning to parents about using force to discipline their children. That story is next. Stay with us. At Pick and Save, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we do up to a 27-point inspection to check for things like color and scarring. Because when it comes to fresh, higher standards mean fresher produce. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Experience the world's number one musical, don't miss your chance to see The Lion King, one of the most awe-inspiring productions ever brought to life on stage. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at Overture.org. Home. There's no place like it. It's where we gather, we celebrate, and where we make memories. At Steinhoffel's, our customers are part of our family. Always have been and always will be. During Steinhoffel's employee family price sale, you pay what we pay. And with Steinhoffel's special 72-month financing, your new furniture just got more affordable. Shop today in store or online at steinhoffels.com. Hi, I'm Gary Canulti, and I'm inviting you on a holiday vacations tour. Join me as we explore classic Italy, October 7th through the 15th. Discover Tuscany's charming countryside, Venice's grand waterways, and the magnificent art of Florence. We'll also spend time in the ancient city of Rome, visiting historical landmarks such as the Colosseum and the Sistine Chapel. Visit HolidayVacations.com, keyword WISC, for more information and to watch a travel show. Or call 888-557-1020 for a free brochure. When your door is always open, so is the fridge. At Pick and Save, however you shop, in-store, pickup, or delivery, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards. That's a win-win-win. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. The FDA has approved additional doses of a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine booster for certain vulnerable individuals. Bivalent coronavirus vaccines fight both the original strain as well as the Omicron and its spinoffs. The FDA amended its emergency use authorization for the Pfizer, also the Moderna bivalent vaccines. The changes allow people 65 and older and certain people with weakened immunity to get additional doses before this fall's vaccination campaigns. President Biden signing an executive order today aimed at expanding access to long-term care and also child care. The order issues more than 50 directives across nearly every cabinet level agency. Federal agencies will be directed to identify grant programs that can support child care and long-term care for people working on federal projects. Agencies must consider requiring companies seeking federal job creating funds to expand access to care for their workers. The executive order also requires the Defense Department to improve affordability of child care for military families. Dane County officials are urging parents to think twice before physically disciplining their children. The message comes as part of a new public service announcement. A 2016 study found that physical punishment of children only led to increased disobedience and aggression. It could also lead to possible physical and mental health problems later in life. The PSA, part of Dane County District Attorney Ishmael Ozan's No Hit Zone initiative. After the break, Dane County joined some exclusive company nationwide after the completion of a massive solar project. And the Boys and Girls Club reaches a new Wisconsin milestone with the opening of a new location. We'll have a sneak peek next. Plus, maybe some rainy weather over the next couple of days. Gary has your complete forecast when we come back. Superior, Wisconsin. It's a fisherman's paradise. Outfit yourself with gear and the latest fishing conditions from Jim over here. It's John. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, 
You may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833 WIS VRAP. That's 833 947 8727. Get 11% off everything at Menards and update your home's flooring today. Great Lakes Vinyl Planks are a perfect flooring solution for any room. Check out our great selection of durable, waterproof floors that are easy to install. Great Lakes Vinyl Plank Flooring features an attached pad for comfort and noise reduction. Pick up Defender Vinyl Plank Flooring for just $2.79 a square foot after 11% rebate now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Two for seven bucks every day. Classic beef and cheddar hog. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. So how green is your thumb? Here at the Bruce Company, it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned gardener or a newbie. When you come to the Bruce Company, you'll get expert advice from their knowledgeable team. You'll find beautiful plants, pots, and garden art, plus creative ideas and solutions. The Bruce Company has all the tools you'll need to bring your dream garden to life. So dream big and get growing with help from the Bruce Company. The Bruce Company, your outdoor living experts. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Since 1887, the Boys and Girls Club of Wisconsin has been serving youth all across the state. Their reach is now expanding to Columbia County, where it's set to open its 200th location. Our Kyle Pozorski joins us with a behind-the-scenes look at what's being done ahead of this opening. Kyle? Well, Eric, the Boys and Girls Club of Portage is excited to welcome kids from all around Columbia County in less than two weeks. The new facility is housed in the former Roush Elementary School, which closed its door last year. And while not everything is set just yet, they tell me staff are working around the clock to get it ready. I think it's things on order, getting deliveries in for as far as equipment goes and, and whatnot, training our staff. We've got two weeks to get them all ready to rock, and, and then we should be ready. The building will have a STEM room, reading space, and a large game room. They say this will all help to create a safe space for kids in 1st through 12th grade to be after school. One unique feature of the Porridge facility is that they get to use the school's old gym to host all sorts of physical activities. Their famous blue doors open on May 1st, where they're expecting to welcome more than 100 kids. Kyle, thank you. Today, Dane County became the fourth county in the entire country that's now using 100% renewable electricity at all county facilities. This is after the completion of the Yahara Solar Project today. The installation of 33,000 solar panels at a 90-acre solar farm site in Cottage Grove will reduce climate change in greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to those produced by more than 5,000 vehicles. We want to do everything we can to help show people the way, to help facilitate and show them that it can be done, and frankly, to put a little pressure on other folks too. Because as I said before, we, there, there's no time to waste. Everyone has to get on board with this. Everyone has to do their part. And there's nowhere we see more action in the, than in local government and on the local level. The project will produce enough electricity to power more than 3,000 Dane County homes. Some thunderstorms could be moving through the area later tonight. Here's Gary with your complete forecast. Yeah, with thunderstorms in the forecast, it's a good time to take a look at lightning safety rules as part of uh, severe thunderstorm and tornado awareness week in Wisconsin. Um, lightning, of course, can be deadly. Uh, last year, there were uh, 19 deaths across the country. We average about 20 per year. Unfortunately, three of those fatalities were near the White House. A couple of them were uh, people from Janesville. Two deaths so far across the country from lightning in uh, 2023. The last lightning fatality in Wisconsin, August 2021, and that in Menominee of a construction worker, thought the storm was over, the rain had stopped, went back outside, got up on a ladder, and got struck by lightning. That happens quite a bit. People think they're okay that when the rain stops, that's not the case. Lightning 
can strike many miles away from where it's raining. Uh, so many people who have lightning also have permanent injuries. Uh, a lot of times you have injuries from burns, nerve damage, uh, you lose your hearing or uh, have some kind of a, a, a permanent f uh, injury to yourself. And 90% of all lightning fatalities are men. Not a surprise, men are outside a lot, uh, golfing, that sort of thing. And that's where you see a lot of uh, the fatalities. As far as uh, knowing how far lightning is, well, you see a flash of lightning, you, do, you count, see how many seconds it is before you hear the thunder, divide that by five, and that gives you the distance in miles. And remember the 30-30 safety rule. If there's less than 30 seconds from the time you see a flash of lightning until you hear the thunder, head indoors, and then wait 30 minutes after the last time you hear thunder before you go back outside. Three things you need to know in our forecast, thunderstorms in the forecast for both tomorrow and for Thursday. Also will be breezy all the way through the weekend and into parts of next week, but the weekend will be chilly again as high temperatures drop back into the 40s. Doppler track right now, quiet across the upper Midwest. However, that will change by tomorrow. Storm Prediction Center has a marginal or level one risk for isolated severe thunderstorms, probably hail the main threat over southwestern Wisconsin tomorrow. Severe Severe weather's around on Thursday right now, outlook to the south of us, but temperature is getting into the 60s. I think that uh, area might be moved farther north. We might have a severe weather threat here on Thursday afternoon ahead of a cold front. Rainfall, generally around a half inch to an inch of rain over southern Wisconsin. Some areas could pick up over two inches in heavier storms. That would be more likely north and west of Madison, but that could also lead to some issues with flooding because many rivers are at or above flood stage, and there are flood warnings in effect for much of the Mississippi River as well as parts of the Wisconsin River. Planning United across Dane County, low 38 in Windsor, 38 in Middleton, 40 in Cross Plains, some showers developing out to the west of Madison by morning, 42 for the low in Prairie du Chien and 38 in Lone Rock to the north and east, uh, 32 in Watoma and 36 in Fond du Lac. For tomorrow, look for mostly cloudy skies. It'll be breezy and cool with scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly in the morning. High temperature at 50. You can see early tomorrow morning, a first batch of showers and storms kind of moving on through. Notice those temperatures staying in the 40s. A bit of a break during the afternoon tomorrow. Temperatures get up to around 50. A few scattered pop-up showers and thunderstorms becoming a little more numerous tomorrow night. And then a wave of showers and storms during the day on Thursday as the cold front comes through. Notice the temperatures in the mid-60s, so that might be warm enough to bring the potential for some severe weather. Rainfall amounts heavier north and west of Madison, but any spot could pick up an inch or two in a heavier thunderstorm. First warned 7 to 10 day forecast. After the storms, temperatures drop into the 50s on Friday, 40s for the weekend. We slowly warm back up again to the low 60s by the end of next week with some shower chances from Wednesday night through Friday. And coming up in sports, the status of Giannis for game two against the Heat and why the Bucks defense needs to be way better than it was in game one. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Make a difference in the world. Be a mentor. Young people need a positive role model to succeed and navigate life's challenges. Learn about mentorship opportunities at unitedmadison.com slash mentoring. Brought to you by Fearing's Audio Video Security and United Madison. Fry Construction invites you to celebrate spring with our big spring thaw sale. We're talking about savings of 23%. Many of your neighbors already know how we strive to meet and exceed expectations with each and every project. That's why they voted us best roofer three years in a row. Experience the best of Madison for yourself with Fry Construction. Get on board with our spring thaw sale. Save 23% off gutters or insulation with any full roofing project. Schedule your consultation today at fryconstruction.com. There are so many things we take for granted. So many things. And along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for their survival for granted too. The elderly, disabled, the veterans, people on limited and fixed incomes, or folks that lost jobs in sectors hardest hit during the pandemic. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? Some people just can't come back. And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind, struggling to keep their heat, water, and power on. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our heat, Water and power providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. 
You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. What's your lawn care plan for the summer? Having a Maple Leaf Lawn Care Maintenance Program means a better looking lawn and more free time for you. Check our website for special discounts and leave the yard work to Maple Leaf, your year-round property care experts. Make a difference in the world. Be a mentor. Young people need a positive role model to succeed and navigate life's challenges. Learn about mentorship opportunities at unitedmadison.com slash mentoring. Brought to you by Fearing's Audio Video Security and United Madison. The Chandler Halderson case isn't over yet. Tomorrow, a local attorney tells us why the man serving life in prison for his parents' murders is back in court. And we got several rounds of thunderstorm chances. We'll be tracking them tomorrow morning between 4.30 and 7. The Bucks practiced today ahead of game two against the Heat. However, Giannis did not. Mike Budenholzer did say there's been a lot of progress made, and he hopes there's more in the next 24 hours. As of now, he's listed as doubtful. Wesley Matthews officially ruled out. But if Giannis plays or not, the Deer have to sure up their defense. Miami scored 130 points while shooting nearly 60% from the floor. That's not sitting right with Jay Crowder. 130 points in a playoff game, I think that's entirely too much. Uh, with the caliber of defensive players that we have, I think we have to clean that side up. I think you, we scored 117 points and then shoot the ball well. It's not offense. I think um, offense will take care of itself. I think defensively, though, we cannot expect to win a playoff game and giving up 130 points. The Brewers started their final stretch of their 10-game West Coast road trip off on the right foot with a win over the Mariners, but at a cost. Their ace, Corbin Burns, left the game in the sixth inning with what the club is calling a left pectoral strain. The good news is Craig Council is calling it a minor injury and said that they're not ruling him out for his next start. The Brewers already lost Brandon Woodruff with a right shoulder strain. Back in late March, Maddie Wilkie put her name in the transfer portal and now, not even three weeks later, the Beaver Dam standout has a new home. Wilkie is taking her talents to Utah and will play for the reigning Pac-12 regular season champs. The Utes fin advanced to the Sweet 16 and finished eighth in the final coaches poll of the season. Wilkie's coming off a freshman campaign where she set a Wisconsin record for most threes made by a freshman. Wisconsin softball was supposed to host Minnesota tomorrow, but because of the threat of rain in Wednesday's forecast, the doubleheader has been moved to next Tuesday. First pitch against the Gophers is set for 2 o'clock. The Badgers are on the road this weekend for a three-game series with the Huskers starting Friday. UW is looking to snap their four-game losing streak. And Dana Retke was doing Dana Retke things across the pond. The former Badger helped her team advance to the playoffs over in the Italian Pro Volleyball League she plays in and was named MVP of the match. Looks like she got a T-shirt and maybe some wine with the award. Not really sure. Somebody's got to tell that guy, don't ever pose in a picture next to Dana Retke. She makes everybody look really short. Let's go to Gary, final check of the forecast. Looking very nice out there. There's a live view from the WISC TV Sky Cam getting set for a nice sunset. Platteville Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam looking nice as well. Current temperatures, a little cool. 52 Madison, 57 Janesville, 40s over the snow cover to the north and west. In Dane County, 51 right now in Mount Horeb, and 51 in Cross Plains. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight at 10.